One of the things that's important to be able to do with IntelliJ is to be able to import existing projects that may not have all of the IntelliJ material set up. In this video, what I'm going to do is walk you through a demonstration of how to import an existing project into IntelliJ that has specific libraries associated with it. Sometimes it's very, very useful to actually keep the libraries right in your code repository or in your Git repository. That way you can guarantee exactly which version of the libraries your code is working with. There are other ways you can do this with um, linking to library repositories and things like that. The danger is if those libraries that you're linked to change or if they're not available, your project can't be built. So a lot of times it's very, very useful to have everything library-wise right inside our Git repository. So what you see on screen is an example Git repository that you might check out. We have in here a source directory that's showing some source code in here. In this case, it's some Java code. And we see in here there's also some libraries. These are jar files that have been placed in with the project that are going to be part of this project that we're going to be working with in um, IntelliJ. So what we want to do is create a project and set it up so that it uses these libraries. And in this particular case, what I'm going to do is actually write a sample test case which would do limited testing for this project. Now you'll note that I have a separate parallel test directory. This is a very, very common paradigm as well, that our tests are kept in this second parallel directory structure, parallel to source, same package structure and things existing. That way it's very easy again for us to keep track of our tests, our sources, and then of course any libraries that we use in our project. So let's get started here. So to begin with, what I'm going to do is start by running IntelliJ. And you can't see this because it's popping up on a secondary screen. But IntelliJ, if I drag the box over here, is asking me to open up existing projects, things like that. What I'm going to do is I'm, in my case, going to open the project. And I'm going to actually browse to the directory that is part of my repository that, I'm going to be, that I've checked out. So in my case here, this is E colon temp lab 2 baseline. And notice I'm selecting the directory one level above where my source, test, lib, all of these things live at. So it's going through and it is going to create an IntelliJ IDEA project. And we see that right now there is no existing source. There's nothing else that exists inside of my project here. So what I want to do is take and actually create and set up my project. So if I right click on the project settings here, we can go down here in this thing called open module settings. And we see that in the open module settings, first off, I don't have an SDK selected. So in my case, what I'm going to do is select the installed SDK that is on my particular machine. The other thing I don't have is a place for the compiler output to be placed. Compiler output is where the class files get created and all of those things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to browse in my directory here. And I'm going to go into this same place I was at here. And what I'm going to do is create a new folder here that I'm going to call out. Again, right at the same level. Now, I'm not going to actually check this back into my repository because I don't want classes and this type of stuff being kept in there. But I am creating it again in a parallel directory structure relative to the project that I have here. So I have my out being set. Now what I need to do is select where my source code files are, the directories for that, where my tests are at, and resources and things that I need. So in my case here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that source, SRC, is source. So you see how this is now selected as source code files? And my tests are going to be set up as test directory. My libs, right now I have a little bit of a, a weird situation in that actually what I have is entirely test resources. I'm going to simplify it, and for right now I'm just going to call these all resources that are in lib. There may be cases later on where I would actually have test libs and libs set up again in this parallel directory structure. So I've got those brought in. And what I'm going to do is now go into my project here. And I'm going to say 
I want all of these to be libraries in my project. So in this case, we have Guava, GoCE, Java X, Inject, J Commander, Snake AMI, Test NG. All of these are things that are dependent upon the Test NG environment that I'm going to use for writing my test cases here. So those are all being brought into my project, and we are all set. Now you'll notice that my project now has this out being kind of colored in orange, indicating that's where my out directory is. My source is kind of blue, and I've got my green test directory. My test directory right now doesn't have any tests in it. So what I want to do is write myself a test. So I'm going to create, in this case, a new Java class that's going to be called test queue. And that is the name of the class. Now, typically my approach is, is that I will name all of my test classes starting with test. That's not necessarily universally done, but it's not necessarily a bad practice either. So I've got this all set up in here like so. And what I want to do is I'm going to write myself a test. So I'm going to start out at test, which is a test ng annotation, and public void test add, like so. Now, even though tests don't necessarily have to start with the keyword test, I like to do that again as a convention so that I can very easily tell which methods are tests versus something that may be a helper or something else that we'll talk about in later cases. So I've got test add written here. And I'm going to start by using what we call the AAA format, arrange, act, assert. So arrange means basically I want to start by setting up my test conditions. Act, I'm going to do something. And assert, I'm going to verify that things have actually been created properly. So in this particular case, for a basic test of add, what I'm going to do is start by creating a new queue. So I'm going to have a new queue here. So in my case here, I have a circular queue of integer that I'm going to call test queue. And that is a new circular queue, which has a capacity of 5. I've created that. Now I'm going to act on this. Boolean return value equals testQueue.add. And I'm going to add the value 2 to this. OK. So what I have just done is I've created a new queue. I'm going to add something to it. And the only assert I can do right now that's the simplest one for this video demonstration is to assert that the return value was correct for the add operation. Now, in this particular case, the add operation returns true if successful, false if it failed. There are other methods inside of this queue that do some different things based upon the Java doc. So in the assert, what I would do here is I would have something along the lines of assert true, basically asserting that the return, return value is true. And my message is here, the add method should return true if successful, like so. So what I'm doing is I am going to print out this message, and I'm asserting that this return value is true. Now, you'll notice this assert true ended up being in red because I do not have the test ng assert true method imported. So when I bring that in, I am all set. Now, I've got another warning up here. Uh, why is this here? I'm not quite sure why that is giving me that error. Um, like so. Oh. Maybe I could fix it with this. Whoops. Indicating that these are tests. Is that going to fix it? OK. Not sure why that error is there. So let's run this test queue here and see what happens. So I click on the run method and cannot find symbol circular queue. C-I-R-C. 
Do I misspell it, maybe? Let's see. C-I-R-C-U... C-I-R-C-U-L-A-R... Hmm, <laughs> why does this not like me? Cannot find symbol, class, circular Q. C-I-R-C-U-L-A-R-Q-U-E-U-E. Hmm, that's not good. This is the danger of recording live video here. Location inside of this queue. Ah, the package is correct. That importation is correct. That is correct. And I'm just going to do this because I don't think this is the problem, but if I mistype something wrong, that should fix it. Well, something I must have typed wrong because it looks like that fixed it, and now I should be able to run test queue. And we see now that the tests are all properly running. Okay, hmm. Not sure exactly what my mistake was there, but it was a naming issue, I think. So it's now set up, it runs, we see one passes. Now, if for some reason there was something wrong with this test, so if I throw, for example, a not in here, what should happen is this assert will now fail. So if I do that, I can now go up here and run the test queue, and we see the test failed. The add method should return true if successful, expected true, but found false. So what I have demonstrated in this point is how to bring in libraries, how to actually write a first test ng test case, and a little bit of how to use the AAA notation for test cases. That's going to bring this tutorial video to a conclusion.